Hello, welcome back to Math Time with Professor Prime, and I am your host as always, Professor Prime. So welcome to Super Ultra Mega Math History, Phenomenal Figures, the series where I talk about awesome people throughout math history that changed and shaped the game, that did incredible things, and I talk about those things, but also just what I think is cool about them. And I do so in a relatively chill way, paying respect when it's due, because, you know, these are awesome people that did great things usually. Um, they always did great things. Awesome people, it depends. That part depends. But I, I pay respect where it's due, but also I'm ridiculous where it counts when I have to describe some of their like crazy feats, because like, it, it, just, it gets insane. And so this episode is a little different than the other ones, and you're going to find out why in a little bit. So this episode is on Nicholas Birabaki, a mathematician that started to get popular around the mid-1930s. It still has work that goes on to this day. So if you just heard that, right, you're probably wondering, well, how does that work? Is he just like a really old mathematician that just keeps on going? And this is where it gets interesting. This is where this like it gets wild. So Nicholas Bar, oh, sorry Nicholas Burbaki, is a mathematician that didn't really exist. He has a lot of published work, but there was no actual Nicholas Burbaki. So then, what happened? What 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 went on? What went down? Well. Nicholas Birbaki is a pseudonym used by several mathematicians that came together to write some insane math textbooks. And to dive into that history a little further, um, around 1934, 1935, there were some math professors in France that they weren't happy with the textbooks that they were using for the class. World War I was a devastating war, and in France, there was a lot of like um, mathematicians that didn't get to do what they you know, needed to do at the time. Right? They pretty much lost out in a whole generation of them. And so a lot of textbooks were outdated. And so these professors, there was like two to start, they wanted to create a math textbook that gave a little bit more rigor. And they got together with seven other mathematicians at the time, if I'm not mistaken. And from there, they created the Birbaki group and they would make material and publish material under the same pseudonym, Nicholas Birbaki. So it seemed like this dude was just doing this crazy stuff. And what kind of stuff in math was this guy talking about? He was talking about a lot of pure math. He was talking about analysis. So, you know, he got into set theory, got into abstract algebra, got into functional analysis, all these crazy, like, high-level ideas in math. And they're known for um, creating the elements of mathematics where they, like, um, had a bunch of different books and volumes on these different subjects. And they honestly helped shape 20th century math. Like, about a decade ago, I took real analysis. And it wouldn't surprise me to find out just how connected that might be. Because what they were really responsible for, in addition to just getting the pure math out, is to get it out and um, say that there has to be a more rigorous way to talk about this. Conjectures weren't enough. So they wrote all these books, and they wrote it under the same name. Now they're just known as the Birbaki Group, because now we know. But um, one of the things that doesn't get talked about too much is that like it wasn't all cake during that process. And I don't mean just writing the books. I mean, like I think one of them... He was suspected of being a spy during World War II because, you know, he had a bunch of, like, uh, stuff that was under that name, <laughs> under Virbaki, and so that doesn't sound like a fun time. But in any way, I think it's a fascinating story, and the group, of course, doesn't really consist of the initial members, but uh, it keeps on going. And the level of impact that it has in this modern age doesn't match up with, you know, what happened before, the influence kind of declined, but uh, that beginning stuff and all the crazy stuff that they did in the 50s and 60s and all that, that maintains. 
that holds up and it affects us in ways we don't even think about because like i said with analysis you can't tell me that that is the way that that's taught in the way that you see like the textbooks hasn't been influenced by that uh, by them if you did i'd be a little shocked if you know um but their work didn't impact that so yeah nicholas Bur burbaki sorry like <laughs> nicholas burbaki the mathematician who was profound and collaborated with a lot of people that turned out to never actually exist because he was just a group of dudes in the beginning that got together because they were unhappy with their math textbooks. And for the record, shameless plug is shameless. I am writing a book and I've mentioned that on my channel um, and kind of like to help people with a behind the scenes story of math. But there's also that whole thing uh, that I, I have been happy with a lot of math textbooks over the years. So, you know, I'll be writing my own. Make sure it's done right. And, you know, that's the mindset that they had. And it's just wild to think that it's still a thing. Now, I knew about Virabaki before I started doing this video. I didn't know it was still going on in some form or another. So, in any case, I hope you enjoy learning a little bit more about this very strange math tale where I talk about this phenomenal figure that didn't actually exist. <laughs> but did a lot. So I'll see you in the next video. Professor Prime out.